What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. It has been a while since we did a podcast, but uh, I got a new host with me today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, the name is Jeremiah Reyes, uh, J for short, for anybody like who cares to call me whatever they want. So Jeremiah, is, we've known e- we've known each other for a while. We've we went to school with each other. I I, I know your I've known your brother first, and then I met you. Um, so let's fast forward to like now. Uh, y- the reason why I wanted to bring you on was because I saw how creative you were doing your own solo stuff. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about what you do, your channel, and everything? Uh, yeah. Um, so what I do is just like comedy entertainment, or just try like to put a smile on people's faces. You know, like it, it's called Stormy TV. Um, basically, what I why I named it Stormy TV is, you know, when growing up and you're like you have like a stormy day on your hands. Uh, it's just you want to get away from those cloudy days, and I call it Stormy TV because you know you go there with a storm with a stormy day, but you yeah. leave like with you know with those clear skies. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you guys aren't aware, I'll put the link in the description below. Stormy TV, go check it out. Uh, he's got some funny stuff. He's got his own Instagram, uh, too, which I will link below. Uh, his username to check him out. He's got a couple funny skits. One of my funny, one of my favorite funniest skits that you do is uh, the little people hands, and we've talked about this. Yeah. And, um, the 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 reason why I started talking to Jeremiah again was because uh, the gym that I work out at, uh, I go late at night after work, and he works nights, so it was it just kind of was destined to happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, who would have thought that like we would have seen each other like at night, like two like nocturnal people just up late at night doing our own thing like so yeah so i i talked to him that night what was it i think it was a monday no mm. tuesday yeah I, I think it was a tuesday it's probably tuesday and we were talking about uh a lot of prank videos to do and then i brought up how uh, how much of a horror fanatic i am and uh you're like that's that's, that's funny right. that you bring that up because i i, I want to do a horror kind of a prank horror video. prank yeah, that's right yeah. yeah i mean you know growing up seeing like those pranksters doing like their own pranks and like during the halloween specials that they do with uh scaring people like that's something that i've always wanted to do especially like since you're a fanatic of like horror i feel like you're a specialist on how to um spark that fear into people you know like yeah 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 um and then after we were talking for a little bit uh we started watching videos of as to what we want to try to do. Yeah. And we started talking a little bit more about that. Um, and I was like, I have to bring this guy on to the Knights of Horror. have to make him a member of the team, um, the ever-growing team. Uh, and I'm, I'm very glad that I got an opportunity to actually talk to you about this and bring you aboard. So, uh, and then I got us talking about the podcast a little bit. And he was fully interested, fully down to do it. I told him, like, listen, I'm looking for a new co-host and stuff like that. I'll set up all the topics, and then, you know, all we got to do is talk about them um, and stuff like that. And you were fully on board. Yeah, and- I mean, I love creating, and I love other creators. Like, it's always better to, like, help each other than just to, like, single each other out and just try to, like, push oneself up on top. I mean, it's better if we all make it to the top instead of just, like, trying to single each other out, you know? Yeah, 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 and that's that's the attitude I loved about uh, you was because uh, you saw that I needed someone for a podcast, and you immediately just stepped up. You're like, "Let me know, I'll come down, we'll do this," and here we are right now. We're yeah. doing it. So um, hopefully, maybe Thursdays, Fridays, we come down to the studio, record a podcast, maybe some other stuff. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we were talking about doing. I, I brought, I shared some of you some of the ideas that I had for horror stuff you yeah. shared some ideas that you had and i want to make those reality um and hopefully we can get somewhere with this honestly definitely i mean you have like the the creative shows that you told me about and i am so like definitely interested in like filming participating in like what you have to offer because i picture it and you know other people might say oh yeah you know i'll help in any way but it's it's set uh, like the next step you just take like you know what let me know when you need me and yeah. i'll be there so like yeah see so that's the attitude i love about you is that you just you're always ready to do something and ready absolutely. to go yeah. um and one of the things i told you i was like we go to we go to events we go to horror nights and stuff like that and it'd be cool because i've seen a lot of the work that you've done as far as mm-hmm. shots and stuff and that'd be just so cool to incorporate on the channel 
Of course, I always give credit where credit is due. Yeah. So you'll get full 100% credit, whatever you film for me. Um, it always goes to you. You you always get some credit in there. And uh, it, it's just awesome that you're going to be on board with this on this project. I've been trying to pe bring people on board to my channel for so long because originally when I, when I created this channel, it was supposed to be me and my cousin, like a duo kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, he doesn't really like being on camera. And so the way I got him in was doing this podcast, and we were going pretty good for a while uh, until I think most recently. And I don't, and I'm not, I'm not mad at him for this because you know it happens. But you know he he goes to his dad's house every weekend, which kind of wasn't very much free anymore, you know. So I just I kind of figured I was like, all right, well he's spending time with his family. I it's totally understandable. Yeah, you know they they all got their personal things that they got to do. You know, I mean, yeah. Uh, as like for me, I mean, even though like we have like our personal things, like. If we want to strive to like grow in what we want to do, you know, and like we have to take that chance, you know, like we our personal families like will be there, but I mean, when are we gonna get this chance to go and expand on yeah on our dreams and stuff? And you know, like your I see your dreams and I believe in your dreams as well. I mean, it, you you make it so vividly that I can see it clearly that hey, this guy like he he himself like shows it, you know, and I can see it clear as day. Yeah, and I want to jump on his train before it leaves there you go man I, I love that attitude like i always like i keep saying um so we're gonna talk a little bit about you today uh i want to make this kind of like a bonus mindless horror episode i want to save the 20th episode for uh, uh another group i'm gonna we're gonna record with hopefully pretty soon um i'm talking to them trying to get it all scheduled out in them and stuff like that so that'd be cool but today i just kind of want to really talk about uh you and uh just to see where you are in the horror world um so like do you remember your first moment with horror yeah it was with chucky honestly um the first ever horror movie i remember is chucky the killer doll you know it was with child's play and it was one of the scariest movies i've ever seen basically it's like you take an inanimate object and it's it's alive you know it's something spiritual and it's trying to you know kill you or in my eyes that's that's what it was like i feel like it was going to come out and try to kill me because it was trying to take over my body like as a kid seeing it try to chase after a kid you know i was just like hey like this killer doll is coming after me too so that's the first horror movie that i feel like impacted me in horror chucky yeah that's that's a good one chucky the child's play franchise it's been all over the place i have not seen the more most recent ones Oh yeah, yeah, the one where um during the asylum. It's uh the curse of Chucky and the cult of Chucky. Yeah, the cult of Chucky. It's very intense, honestly. Um, I feel like they're gonna expound on it. And oh, but well, I heard they're developing a TV series. Really, I, so, I haven't heard about that, but so that's in the works right now. I don't, I don't know how it's gonna work out. Uh, my whole thing with the Chucky TV series is like, if if so, if a network's gonna pick it up, it's gotta be a network like HBO, Showtime, or Netflix, where yeah, they have yeah. the rights to do whatever they want. As far as you know, the freedom of speech and everything. Because if you if you guys aren't aware, Chucky is he's a very potty mouth character. Yeah, and I feel like um, in his most recent uh, movies, they they cut back on the character development. He's just like now a killer doll, and that's basically because, you know he's trying to kill people, and that's about it. I feel like they have to go back to the roots on why he's killing. You know, like he was a sociopath who initially liked killing, but why is he killing now? Because he's trying to get out of that body. You know. Yeah. That was uh, his always uh, his mindset was to uh, try to get free and get a new body, and so he could start a new killing spree. He was originally a, a wanted uh, murderer, uh, Charles Lee Ray, and then he got he used voodoo magic to get into his uh, a doll that way because he knew his original body was going to die out, so he transported his soul yeah. into a doll. Um, and now throughout the entire series that they've been doing, it's like he was trying to get Charlie for a little bit. I don't know why he would like to get a little kid. Maybe because they'd start younger and then he just grows up to be a serial killer. I don't. Probably should be like innocence, maybe. Innocence, um, probably, yeah, because you can get away with a lot as a kid. Um, um, in other sorts, I mean, then he tried to go, like, when he was in the military school, he didn't want Charlie anymore or because he was, like, older already, so he wanted, like, the other kid. And, I mean, it's basically maybe younger, innocent kids, maybe it's the preference for, like, the ritual to take hold. So yeah, yeah. So, yeah, man. Chucky's always a good a good thing to start off with. That that's a good one. Um, is there anything you're into now that like kind of scares you? Like, I know a lot of horror these days. It's really hard to come by with yeah. something that really gets you. 
Me personally, I think uh, I have to say the Conjuring stuff is doing really good right now. Um, that'd be like the Nun, Annabelle, all those movies. The whole universe is just. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually really looking forward towards the Nun. I mean, uh, one that I actually had high hopes for was um, that one, that one possessed game that they were playing. Uh, it's Truth or, Truth or Dare. Truth or Dare. Yeah. yeah. Truth or Dare. I had high hopes for that one, but in all honesty, um, it did get me some jump scares, but it wasn't so like initiating with me because the ending was so like it was it wasn't very like oh my goodness like i love this i love the ending i love how they enacted like yes like i want more you know i yeah. I, I don't really know how to describe it it just didn't fulfill my enjoyment of the horror no I, you know i haven't seen the movie but i do know the ending uh, i yeah. watch a lot of like ending explains on on youtube for like vid- movies that i really don't want to check out Fortunately, I'm going to have to watch this movie because it's going to be part of a maze this year at Halloween Horror Nights. Uh-huh. I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to do it Yeah. as far as the smiley faces and stuff like that. So that's going to be very good creative-wise. So that should be pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, it didn't look like it hit box office numbers like they wanted to. And it didn't really look like... Uh, it didn't look like... Uh, oh, stuff's falling back there. It didn't look like uh, it uh, was... It didn't do good in the movies as it, far as reviews it, and stuff. It looked, it didn't look like a horror movie. It felt more like a, it felt more like a upcoming horror movie or some sorts, you know? Like, it didn't, it, it had so much hype behind it, you know? Yeah, I get you, I get you. But the hype didn't live up to its expectations, and that's where I felt like it fell short on. Yeah, um... Uh, you know what? I have to say, though, with Blumhouse Productions, it's kind of hit or miss because they do some good original movies that come around every now and then. Uh, one of them being uh, Truth, not Truth or Dare, um, Happy Death Day. I don't know if you saw that one. That I was, did see Happy Death Day. And that I, one was That good. one was actually very interesting. Um, I like the concept of, you know, living and then you die and then she relives again and just trying, trying to find, to find her, her killer. killer. Yeah. That one was um very interesting to me because you know she kept on reliving and she kept on trying to find clues and it's crazy how like she kept on remembering everything that happened to her up to like every time that she died, you know? Yeah. Um and I and I really liked that. It was like a it was like the movie Groundhog Day with um Bill Murray, but it was a a horror version of it, mm. which was cool. Um and then, of course, if you guys are familiar, Blumhouse, and I just found this out like last month, they did the Paranormal Activity movies like back in the those, day. Those were the best movies. Those like, were good, yes, yeah. Those were the best. I mean, I remember seeing the first Paranormal Activity, and that takes you back to like on YouTube, you know? Like yeah. you see those actual ghosts caught on tape, or you know, you see the stuff moving by poltergeists or stuff. That's what I like about horror, like something that's kind of like in the real world. You know, that's the real horror that scares me, I suppose. You know, something that can possibly happen because I believe in ghosts. Like, I don't Oh, yeah, know. I do too. Trust me, I do, yeah. Uh, I, I will say this. I, I, the school that we used to go to, John Glenn, yeah. I worked there and uh, there's got to be some shit there. I know there is. I heard that, you know, you you heard as well that there was uh, murder, suicide. murder suicide. Yeah, that the boyfriend killed his girlfriend, and then killed himself all yeah. in the back of the school. And um, Actually, that's funny, the break room. It's it, it, I don't know if you remember where uh, Mr. Viegas' room was at. Yeah, all the way in the back. Yeah. In, that, in that tree area, that's where it happened. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, I mean, I our break room is literally right there, right in front of that tree. And I've walked back there by myself. I've, I haven't heard nothing in that area. I've also heard that the NPR stage is haunted from McCloy. I haven't heard of that one. Like, what's the story behind that? So I guess there's they have a there's a ghost named Pasquale there, and they've heard stuff. Uh, I've heard stuff firsthand. Uh, one time they were telling ghost stories on Halloween up there. Uh, it was, it's a tradition he does if Halloween lands on a weekday, mm-hmm. and um, I heard something rattle in the cage, and I was like the one I was the one nearest to the cage, and, like there was no one else leaning against or anything. I heard something like fall in the cage, and I just ran off stage and. Like, the whole class was up there. They were all looking at me like I was scared. And I'm like, nah, I'm not doing that. And and honestly, like, you as a big guy, like, they would probably look at you like, hey, like, why are you running? Like, Yeah, out of all there? people, you know? And it's yeah. like, so um, I heard that's that the stage is haunted. I've heard the boys' and girls' locker room is haunted, but I've been in there firsthand. There, there are, like, some, some rumors that there are haunted, but I personally haven't seen anything. I mean, it is creepy being in a locker room by yourself, like, 
if you think about all like the horror movies, like the Scream. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, yeah. try being in a locker room at night. At night, you know, alone. I do that every night. And but we we recently, me and my my uh, coworker, we team up and we do both locker rooms together, just because we we have that vibe where it's like we feel like someone's watching us. I hate that feeling. Yeah, I especially don't like that well feeling. for me in the girls' locker room, that's what it feels like. But I I have an EMF device that can capture ghosts and stuff like that, or you know, it goes off to see if there's any electric magnetic field anywhere. And I went into both. I've gotten more activity in the boys' locker room than I did in the girls', so that was pretty interesting. Um, but I also heard room eight ten was haunted. That's Coach Brooks's room. Um, I I honestly feel like possibly. I mean, I know that I the school that I used to go uh, go to in Norwalk, where John Glenn is located at, yeah. um, called Edmondson, was paved over a graveyard. Really? Yeah. So that whole pl- that whole school is haunted, and I remember growing up as a kid when I went to the went to the restroom, you would hear like little squeaks on the floor, but there would be no other children there. Oh damn! So yeah, like you would hear like footsteps, you would hear like tapping on the window or tapping on the door, and there'd be like no like nobody there. So, I mean, I don't think I ever sub there either, and I, that'd be cool. I know Excelsior is haunted. Too. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, there's no doubt about that. Excelsior is haunted, especially since like it's not a school school anymore. It's more like adult school. It's adult school, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. I would love to go ghost hunting there. I'm trying to get a crew together. I want to go ghost hunting. That's exactly what I was thinking. Honestly, have you seen um Ghost Hunters with Zach? Uh, oh, Ghost Adventures. Oh, uh, Ghost Adventures. Yeah. yeah. Ghost Adventures, like the number one show I would watch growing up because I would think like these guys are crazy going to like. Uh, um, haunted places at night, staying the whole night from yeah. dusk till dawn. Like I want to do that. I want to get scared. Like I love yeah. being scared, even though it's not fun. You know. Yeah, that's that. I, I I've I've been wanting to go to Queen Mary and check it out, and because I've heard a lot of stuff there. So we gotta maybe plan that one out pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, I I'd, I'd be down to go to um. You have you heard about the di- the Downy Asylum? I I ain't fucking with that one. I don't think I would. Really? I've heard that there's not only it's haunted, but I've heard that there's like a lot of cult shit that goes there. I don't really like to fuck with that kind of stuff. Me personally. I mean, I ain't trying to. I didn't try to walk up in there and then they're fucking doing a sacrifice, and I'm just like, I don't know. It's not about like catching them doing it. It's about the experience. Yeah. I mean, we could like possibly wind up seeing something like that, but. It'd be so bone chilling, like, hey, like this is real. Like, yeah. It's not just movie stuff. Like, we've captured it. It's on camera. We gotta show it to the world. Yeah. Cause like, have you ever seen like those um Bigfoot sightings or like Loch Ness monster type stuff? Bigfoot's real. But they never capture him like in like HD like that's resolution. That's you know, because he's smart. Because he he's wanna, smart. He doesn't want to be seen. I believe that there's a Bigfoot <laughs> out there though. I, and I, same with the Loch Ness monster. I think there was something at one point. The Loch Ness like, monster is kind of sketchy to me. I mean, I feel like maybe it's just a giant serpent type creature. I just think I don't think it's here anymore. I just think there was something at one point though that started the legend. I think back in like medieval times and stuff. Uh, do do you think like maybe it's like alter dimensional type creatures type stuff? It know? could be. I mean, the government has worked with so many weird stuff over the years, and they've gotten their hands on stuff that kind of scares me to this point, to this day, that I'm just looking at it like, we're fucked, in a way, yeah. you know? And so... I mean, they have their secrets. They, I mean, their, their plan is mainly to just keep us calm. That's it. Yeah. Um, one of the, the biggest uh, conspiracy theories that I love uh, touching on every time is the Area 51. I feel like Area 51 is is real. It's it's a real base. Yeah, it's there, but it's a fake cover up, you know? Yeah, you know what? I think they I think at one point there was alien stuff there, and I think that it just gotten so much so much hype over the years that they it is a very just secretive base that they they probably keep most of government secrets there. Yeah. But I don't think there's no alien stuff there. I feel like there's like experiments there though. I mean, I feel like they're fucking around with something that they shouldn't be, you know, like I don't know if you've seen. I don't know if you've seen on the internet. There's a video that surfaced around for a little bit of uh, these like different parts of the world. There's like these horns that go off. It was kind of like a sign yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay. So um, I did hear about those, and I did hear like a scientific explanation. I think it's like the electromagnetic field, like 
the vibrations that only like certain places can hear it that's one explanation but then there's like those the, the scary like truth that it's like the end of days that's you know? what i've heard too but it happened like a couple years ago so that's why i'm not even tri- tripping about the end of days theory um i mean if you think about it like two-thirds of like the fish because of pollution have died so yeah. that's a trip um with the fires and everything i mean they said that the hills would be on fire or something like that. And if you see in California right now, there's like a huge fire. Fire, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I don't know, man. Like I don't know. I, all I have to say, though, if it is the end of days, I, I've had a good time. Have you? I mean, I've my 20 years. I mean, I've done a lot <laughs> in the last year or two alone. Um, and if it's our time to go, it's our time to go, you know? Yeah. The scariest part is um, not doing what you want to fulfill, you know? Like, it's yeah. it's. Just, it's that part of you that's like, you know what? I feel like I haven't done enough. And that's the scariest part of life, you know? Yeah, that always sucks. And I agree with that. But um, we'll see. I think we got a little bit more time with us still. Yeah, uh, hopefully. I mean, there's there's this up and down. The scariest part is like... I pre- just want to have a kid before this all goes down, you know? A kid? I mean, I kids are scary to- too. <laughs> I would love to have a, at least a child uh, bring into this world. Depends, like girl or like a guy uh, or a boy you know i mean i would want a boy myself you know what i i don't care what i get as long as i have someone to love that's deep, the end of the day. That's yeah really it is it's wow. deep but it's just like at the end of the day uh either way i think i'm gonna make him or her a geek just like a me geek, yeah i mean you're looking in the studio right now i got batman freaking marvel and it's awesome dude honestly it's all different stuff in your like, bands this is this is intense to take in like I got my concert memorabilia right up here on my speakers. All the pics I've ever caught at uh, concerts. Uh, an autographed album from a uh, a punk band that I saw recently. Like, oh, these are all valuable, man. Like I myself would would be a collector myself, but I lack in money, man. You know. <laughs> you know what? A lot of this stuff I just bought in over the years and just kept it. I got a whole ticket wall back there of every concert I've been to. My Yo, I haven't. Even, whoa, that I didn't see that. That's 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 impressive. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff more hidden behind the TV and stuff, but. Um, so yeah, man. Have you been to any uh, horror events like Horror Nights, Scary Farm? Uh, Scary Farm, yeah. Uh, my favorite one to go to was the Jack and Lantern one. Actually, okay. The attraction. What year did you go to Knotts? Uh, it was two years ago, or I think it was last year. To Knotts, yeah. I I got the fast pass, bro, because I was just like, I gotta get on all of these everything. Yeah. yeah. I went last year and I just got general mission, but we hit everything good. I mean, we did. I think we the longest we waited was like two, three hours. That kind of sucked, but yeah. I mean, the lines they get intense. So if you get if you get the fast pass, bro, like you get on every single maze and ride, and you can go again. A limited amount of time, yeah. right? And that's what yeah. I like about theirs is that Horror Nights doesn't do that, which I wish. I think they do do that, but it's like really expensive. It's like the VIP kind of one. And it's the best. I mean, it's it's crazy how they get these crazy ideas. Like my the reason why the Jack O' Lantern one is my favorite is because I mean pumpkins coming to life, man. Like pumpkins coming to life the vines just tearing to you cutting you open and stuff like that like even if, if it's even in itself like scarecrows are scary right yeah. nothing yeah. about jack-o'-lantern coming to get you man like i don't know i is it like can you smash the pumpkin open can you kill it or will it just like regrow have you ever seen the movie uh trick or treat no now that's a that's a good movie it's uh it's gonna be included at this year's halloween horror nights event and the basic premise of the movie is to follow the basic steps and traditions of Halloween. Oh. So it's like three or four stories in the in the movie alone that all eventually tie in at the end, which is really cool. But the main antagonist in the movie, his name is Sam. Now you see Sam throughout the entire movie, and he's wearing a hacky sack for a thing and kind of an orange suit. And he's got uh, this like lollipop that's like a knife and stuff like that. What? All of his Horrible. candies like as weapons and stuff like that. That's... But he essentially is the spirit of Halloween, making sure all the traditions are upheld every night. So throughout the movie, you see, like I said, throughout the movie you see him, but you don't really see him in action until like the very end of the movie, uh-huh. where when he reveals his face, it's like a pumpkin, pumpkin head. Oh no, dude! I. I'd so, freak, bro. It, it's pretty it's pretty trippy <laughs> um maybe one of these days like, i'll show it to you it's a good movie um so yeah i would definitely want to see that i mean the like halloween like in its presence yeah and a, and a jack-o'-lantern like 
pumpkin head. Yeah. Well, man, I'm telling you, you got to buy your ticket, man. We got to go to Horror Nights this year. I'm going to get a, a frequent fear pass so that I can go multiple nights in general. Mission. I would really want to go, honestly, because, like, it's not only, like, the attractions that are all fun. Like, it's the fear that's fun as well, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I the only time I can go on the weekends, I don't know if you can get a day off, maybe. Uh, uh, probably I w- not. I would like to. But, you know, you got to make that money, too. You got to make that money. I get you. I get you. I get you. Um, So, yeah, man, that's that. That's that. I mean... Um, I mean, here's something that I want to ask. Like, what scares you? What I mean, scares you've me? You asked me what scares me, and like, you know, it's it, I'm not that like a horror man. It's I got like some subconscious type stuff, you know, maybe that I that I really like tap into. But what scares you? Um, I don't know. I I think I've, I've watched every horror movie. I, I, I've watched a lot of horror. Movies. I can't say I've watched every horror movie. I've watched a lot of horror movies. The one thing that scares me the most though is probably insects insects like the boogeyman type stuff like i don't like spiders i don't like cockroaches and i know that's like something not to really that's, be scared of but yeah. it's like if you if you've seen movies where like they've brought those to life or if you've ever gone through a maze where like you see a giant spider or something like that you just get the shivers you know it's the creepy crawlies that get you man one of the one of the movies that i i can't watch because of my phobia and i just get freaked out every time i watch it is a movie called eight-legged freaks and it's a it's a it's like a probably early 2000s maybe late 90s horror movie where uh these giant spiders come into this town and start uh killing everyone and the way they made them i just i can't watch it like i can't watch it because it's just it just gets me so like scared and nervous like what if this actually were to happen like big old insects coming to Um, get you yeah and another movie that really touches on that is a movie called um the mist the, the mist. mist, yeah, I I love the mist. Honestly, like Stephen King. That's why I was telling you about like the whole like different dimension, like Loch Ness monster type stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, what if these monsters are from different dimensions, like in the mist? Like, come on, like they the government in that movie opened up a portal to a different dimension, which they seeped through and started killing everybody. But they were like, you seen the one that looks like a big giant grasshopper, right? Yeah. See, so like stuff like that, I'm just like, what if that were to happen one day? Yeah, I mean, we'd be screwed. I, I'd believe it. I mean. Like, yeah, bullets can kill them and stuff, but if it's, like, a mist-type thing where you can't really see anything, and, like, you're walking out there, but those insects can see you, it's it's pretty scary. And it's not even insects, bro. Like, these, you've seen the massive, like, like, mutated, yeah. Yeah, they were, so, like, tentacle monsters-type stuff. You know, like, those Star Wars walkers? Yeah. Those big things that so, we're there, too? I would say that, and I would honestly say, um, I don't know, I've watched, like, a lot of killer movies and stuff like that. Uh, the paranormal is something I won't fuck with, really. I mean, <laughs> other than ghost hunting, but like Ouija boards and stuff, I won't touch any of that. Yeah, no, honestly, um, I'm very like superstitious, so even like saying like the name of that board, bro, like it, I feel like we just alter like, cause I believe like in demons and stuff, mm-hmm. man. Like I've seen some shit growing up, bro. Like I've seen ghosts. I've felt like touches of ghosts. I'll tell you this one story where I was seven years old in um a house in Los Angeles. Right, I was the only one in the house, and my mom was outside in the garden. My siblings, my sister, my brother were in the neighbor's house. They were playing with the neighbors, and I was right there, just eating my cereal. And all of a sudden, I hear laughter, and I was like, "Oh, I guess they must have came back through the back of the door." So I go down the little hallway to the the main room where the door is at, you know, to enter from the background, and I see this little baby doll jumping on the bed, jumping on the bed. And then it stops when I see it, and I, like, choke. I can't say anything. I can't move. And it looks at me, laughs, and falls off the bed. All of a sudden, I just start booking into the front uh, to the front of the house, to the garden. And I'm just like, <sighs> and then I see my mom, and I'm just like, I'm <sighs> I can't even, like, I, I can't talk. I'm crying. I'm like, Shit. I'm, like, not saying anything. Mom was like, what, what? Like, say something. Say what? And all of a sudden, I'm just like, the doll, the doll, the doll. And then, like, when my mom gets up, says, the doll, what doll? She goes to the room and check. The doll wasn't even there. The it doll's was, gone, The doll's dude. gone. The doll's just, like, Damn. Not even there, so, that, that's that's good. That like, doesn't, you're, already, you're automatically on the team after that story, man. I, there's, like, so many stories, man, like, that I have growing up. So, that's I, how, uh, like, I believe what? in this horror stuff, man. I've really, other than the NPR stuff, like, I haven't really experienced anything major ghost-related. And I, I, I've always kind of wanted to just to see how that's and like honestly it's really unreal like even though it happens and like i tell a story and i like get little goosebumps like telling the stories like 
it's so unreal like it's like movie type stuff like you know what maybe it didn't happen and then you feel like you know what but it did happen and i remember um one of one of the stories i love telling people what that happened to my dad like a while back was um they used to live in this house in uh cerritos like right by best buy in that area and uh they it was haunted and they said they used to see a little boy like with his blanket down the hallway and that my uncle who lives with us right now and one of his sons would always talk to someone and they said that you you weren't mostly i mean it's always scary to see a ghost but i think it was the fact that they were uh they said they felt more sad for him because he looked lost which i've heard that some spirits will feed off you know, your energy and make you feel different things like sad and stuff like yeah, that yeah and sometimes for those spirits you just kind of feel you you feel sorry for them you know they're just kind of wandering the world and they don't know what they're doing they, they're just trying to find peace and they can't you know and and we um I've, have you heard like the story that with those types of ghosts like they they get so looped into um what is it purgatory that they become like like dark souls or something like that you know yeah they, they, so they aren't themselves it's, anymore like they it's can't stuff go to like that you know you just kind of you feel sorry for them yeah and so yeah man i mean as far as things that i'm scared of that's, that's really that's really it for me man i mean um is there anything that you're for, for as far as as horror goes uh do you watch a lot of the horror tv shows that are on right now or no um and by that I mean like there's Stranger Things on Netflix. I did watch Stranger Things and I really like enjoyed it. I mean that's another concept like I was telling you like other dimensional stuff yeah. that the government messes with. So yeah. that's a high possibility. Like I don't doubt that the government does mess with like trying to tap into other power sources and just trying to mess with like, you know, reality. So I do believe like hey, like there's other creatures out there from not from this dimension. Yeah. Man, so did it scare me like as much as being a horror? It was like intense. It was very intense, but it didn't scare me. You know, like it wasn't very horror to me. Horror yeah. to me is more like it gives it gives you bone chilling sensation. It gives you yeah. like. And the reason why I bring up Stranger Things for horror is because it is well, it is technically considered horror, but um, yeah, it, it's also one of those shows that just keeps you on your toes. Essentially, it did. It really did. Uh, but for my preference, and not necessarily. I mean. Um, the big monster that will possess the, the kid. demogorgon, the de- or the demogorgon. I mean, that's I don't know. It's like creature type something. Maybe it's it's it was scary towards you since you you don't like insects type stuff and it does look. The like... demogorgon wasn't scary. It just kind of looked like it was good sci fi, you know. Yeah. And I and I really enjoyed that. So, what about The Walking Dead? Do you watch shows like The Walking Dead? I think the only zombie like scary movie that I really liked was like Dawn of the Dead. You know? Dawn of the Dead, George Romero classic. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that that's a good one. I uh, I've never seen the original, but the remake itself was really good. The remake yeah. was really well put together, and I think George Romero actually came back and did the remake uh, himself. Um, he just wanted to modernize it a little bit, um, and that's a good movie. Now, when we talk about horror, we can't always forget to leave out uh we can you know we can never leave out the classic horror monsters are you talking about like talking about my boy frankenstein up there um, oh you're talking about like the werewolf man you're talking wolf about man, uh, the, the invisible the swamp man, monster the uh, mummy creature from the black lagoon the mummy the, the yeah. dracula bride of frankenstein um now i'm gonna be honest with you i've never seen any of those classic movies me neither <laughs> but I know, I know that i'm in love with them because they introduced us to some of the most badass characters known to man um frankenstein alone has probably been one of my always mm. always all-time favorite i mean i've seen clips and stuff from these movies and i think frankenstein i've always felt the most bad for because frankenstein essentially does not want to be a bad guy mm-hmm. but people portray him as a bad guy you're definitely right and then one movie that i do recommend if you haven't seen it i recommend the monster squad i love the monster Squad. oh yeah movie. The kids and stuff. Exactly. And the... Like, how you say that Frankenstein does not want to be, like, a bad guy. And he isn't. If you see him, how he's portrayed in that movie, he's not a bad guy. Yeah. He's friendly to the little girl, you know, and he helps the monster squad. And and that was one thing that I noticed in these classic movies is that Frankenstein didn't ask to be Frankenstein. No, he didn't. And the reason why people 
are going after him is because they don't know what he is. Yeah, because he they're scared of how different he is, you know. And technically, if you want to be really technical, he is the very first zombie. Is Frankenstein? Frankenstein. He's a zombie in a way because they took parts from different people who were already dead, mm-hmm. and they used electricity to bring them back, which created a zombie in a way. See, I always saw that Frankenstein was the the guy that created the Dr. Monster. Frankenstein Dr. you're talking Frankenstein. about. Yeah. But, you know, everybody always just always freaking assumed that that was his, that was his name was Frankenstein. Yeah. Not a lot of people know that too. That's good that you know your knowledge for that yeah. because not a lot of people know that in that movie Frankenstein uh is actually the doctor who created it and we always just refer to the monster as Frankenstein. Yeah. But he's actually known as Frankenstein's monster. Exactly. Um but uh I always thought that um, he was just always trying to be a good guy. Yeah, especially and, when he got his um his bride. Yeah, the know? bride. He and just he, wanted to love. Yeah, you saw that in his mood change um, with that happening. And I always thought the bride was, was a really cool concept too because you're starting to see Frankenstein actually has a heart. Yeah. You know, so. He's not just a pile of dead not, parts yeah, and, mixed together. No, like he has actual emotions and feelings. Heart. Um, another badass character was Dracula. Dracula is always going to be pretty badass to me. I've always uh, loved the concept of vampires, and I think that I can't take Dracula seriously because it always brings me back to like Blade, you know. Oh, Blade's badass though. Yeah, dude. he's Come badass, on. but I like you know. I mean, Blade is just like Marvel, just like hero comics and stuff, and uh, it just mixes me up so much. But Dracula, like in itself, like have you seen um, uh. What's that? Underworld? Yeah. Yeah. So those movies are dope, except the last one. I didn't really like the last one. It was, <laughs> was all right. But the way they portray vampires in there is pretty badass. Another good yeah. movie, if you want to check out, unless you probably have uh, Van Helsing with uh, Hugh Jackman. That was not a bad movie. I haven't seen it. And, I should. And, but, and, and the way the vampires look in there, awesome. Um, Van Helsing, though, has always been in the Dracula mythology of uh you know the enemy of dracula yeah the monster uh, as far as the monster goes uh if you guys are actually familiar with dracula dracula was in the i want to say medieval times a uh, name given to one of the uh like he was a king or something and he used to stick uh i learned this in history uh mr neiman taught me this huh. uh it was one of the one of the books we were reading but he used to the real dracula in real life used to put sticks down and stick the stick up their butt and it would come out out of their mouth and he would li- leave the bodies right there for the enemies to see to uh-huh. intimidate his em- enemies I, I didn't know that and and I, I guess that's... the word Dracula actually means like vicious and cruel and stuff like that so that's why they gave him that name that's in and of itself like disgusting and yeah, scary it's like... disgusting it's, it's disturbing but it is in a way it kind of tells me like wow dude that that's what he's based off and that that's pretty cool but it's cool. I mean, that just makes him even more scary. I mean, who yeah. wants who wants to see like some bodies with sticks up their butts coming out of the mouths? Yeah. Like that's uh Um The Mummy. That's always been an interesting tale. It's been remade three times, and I have to say the one remake that not a lot of people liked was the, the most recent one with Tom Cruise. The one with the uh female mummy? Yeah. I liked it. I was actually waiting for the dark universe to happen. Yeah, after that, after the mummy bombed, they just they just they cut it, they it, scrapped it, man. And I was yeah. just like so into like, hey, like these movies are gonna connect, like you know the mummy. They were gonna... and and they started that with Russell Crowe's character, which was he was Doctor Jackal. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he was the one that was gonna tie them all in. And there was they were gonna tie in the Invisible Man as well. Like, yeah, I was so ready for the Dark Universe. Like, you know, they have Marvel and stuff like that, but the Dark Universe, something like, hey, monsters, like monsters, yeah. yeah. So they were gonna essentially remake every monster movie, and they were well overdue, well well needed, and I and I was really looking forward to it. They had already casted a lot of the monsters. Uh, Angelina Jolie was gonna play the bride, so they were gonna do a Bride of Frankenstein movie before a Frankenstein movie. Um, Javier Bard Bardares Barder, I don't remember his name, how to say his name, but he played. I don't know if you have ever seen the movie uh, No Country for Old Men, hmm. or uh, if you ever seen the movie uh, James Bond Skyfall. Yeah, he was the villain in there, yeah, the one yeah. with the, the the weird face, the one stuff. where he took off the he took off his thing and then, like his face just of cyanide and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was gonna play Frankenstein. That's that's actually he he would make a great character. And uh, Johnny Depp was gonna play the Invisible Man. That would have been pretty cool and interesting. So, 
Uh, yeah, so the next movie was going to be Bride of Frankenstein, which was supposed to come out, I think, uh, next year or this year. I, I don't think I've lost hope for the Dark Universe, though. I think maybe they just have to try again, but this time, like, they have to amp up the horror, you know? I think... Now, The Mummy was good. I, I really enjoyed The Mummy. <laughs> um, uh, we all have all our opinions, you know? I mean, yeah, and I think the fact that The Mummy didn't do so good is because critics don't like Tom Cruise a lot, and that has a lot to do with him being a Scientologist. Mm. Now, yeah, I don't agree with the Scientologist teachings or practicing, but I ain't going to let him being a Scientologist define him as an actor, you know? Like, yeah, he believes in one thing, but when he gets on screen, he's a whole different person, you know? Yeah. It's like your character that you're playing, you're not going to include Scientology into the character you're playing, you know? It's like... Yeah, I mean, you have to respect everybody's beliefs and what they believe in. I mean, oh, yeah. At the, at the end of the day, everybody has their own opinion, and I always respect that. Yeah, I mean, but I feel like... In Hollywood, like, they didn't respect it at all. So, like, how you said, that's why it bombed. They didn't get yeah. the high praise it deserved. I mean, I feel like people would have wanted to see a dark universe, but, you know, they, people were pulling the strings and just they didn't want it to succeed. And and, and that was another thing um, that I, I had high hopes for because the next monster we're going to talk about has never get, gotten a remake ever since it's been out. Are you talking about the creature? The creature from the Black I knew Lagoon. It. Yeah, the creature from and the Black And they Lagoon. teased it a little bit in The Mummy. When you saw his hand, mm -hmm. uh, and you're like, okay, well, is that the creatures, or is that is there more of them, or we didn't know if the creature was dead, um, and so that kind of teased that like, that's gonna be a movie. We're finally gonna, it's finally gonna get a remake, and Universal has been talking about remaking that movie for the longest, and I think if they do a really good job, they can make the creature scary again. It, they can, cause like in the classics, I mean, I remember he just he walks slowly and mopey, and he just. In near water. Yeah. But have you seen the uh, that w the cabin in the woods? Yeah. So there's that one mermaid creature type thing. Yeah. Know? That one was pretty scary. That one was pretty scary. So uh, if they made it anything near as that. If you saw, I don't know if you saw The Shape of Water. No. That Guillermo del Toro movie that won like, a bunch of Academy Awards. That was pretty good. Um, and that was kind of like the suit for the creature in a way. Um, I just feel like though they can make the creature this time around a lot more scarier. They should. They and and this, I I just think yeah maybe in the '30s when that movie came out, of course it was considered a horror movie. But I feel that with today's technology, uh, if you find a good location and make the swamp more like eerie and disgusting and scarier, that you can actually make this movie really good. And definitely a backstory about the creature, because like I always wondered like where did this creature come from. What's its purpose? You know, like why? Why would it want to kill? Why? Why does? What does it want to do with the bodies? If anything, does it want to eat them? Like, it. It. I need more emphasis on that because, like, it can't just kill to kill. I mean, those are. Didn't it fall in love with the girl though in that movie? Didn't he fall in love with some girl? Like he saves a girl in there, doesn't he? I think he falls in love with her. So then, essentially, what they want to try to do is make all these a lot. Uh, at least the majority of these monsters have hearts. In a way, like they're kind of saying, like maybe they're monsters. They didn't want to be monsters, but people portray them. Society portrays them as monsters, and in reality, these guys actually have hearts. But then, in the end, are they really monsters? Then, and they, exactly. <laughs> um, of course, another good one is the Wolfman. I love the Wolfman. The Wolfman is amazing. I mean, it's it sucks that the only way to kill them is like by silver bullets. And I've always thought that was interesting with the Wolfman because. Uh, that makes it even a little bit harder to get your hands on stuff like that. Yeah, and especially, like, the curse on how it works, you know? Yeah. So, I mean... The mark of the beast. There's also, like, different portrayals. Like, you can be bitten by a previous werewolf. Yeah. And so, like, sometimes it's just, like, through blood. Um, especially, like, have you seen, like... Uh, what's it? What's that one show? It's, like, Teen Wolf or something like that. Oh, okay. Oh, my goodness, like... Yeah, that was like through heritage and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, so like there's different sport trails, but the Wolfman was like its own special thing, you know. Yeah, like, and then they did a remake of that, which they were gonna do a couple sequels with, and I think that was their first attempt of doing uh monster remakes was when Universal revamped and remade the Wolfman with um Benicio del Toro and Anthony uh, Anthony Hopkins. Um, that was a phenomenal remake. I I really enjoyed it. I don't think it did too good in theaters as far as numbers and reviews go, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome, and I really wish that they would have made a sequel because they did set it up for a sequel essentially at the end. Um, and so 
It was a mixture between CGI and costumes where they actually had people dressed up yeah. as wolfmen. And they looked really, really good. Um, like, and then, almost as good as the uh, Underworld yeah. The wolves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, the CGI, the only the only uh, time they used CGI was when they were um, using it for, uh, you know, how he runs on all yeah, fours yeah. and stuff like that. But other than that, most of it was the guy in the costume, which was really cool. Yeah, because be, it would be pretty crazy if you see, like, some guy in a costume running that fast. Like, oh, yeah. It'd be insane. That'd be insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... So that was essentially cool. Um, the Invisible Man. There's been different. Um, I've seen one portrayal of the Invisible Man. Uh, I think he's like in New York or something like that. Uh, it was a long time ago. Are you talking about that movie Hollow Man? I think so. Where he's invisible and he kills people. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, that was that movie Hollow. I don't think yeah, it was a, a kind of a different story on the Invisible Man. They made it different, and that movie was interesting on its own. How yeah. how is the Invisible Man like a monster? You know what I mean? I think people are scared of what they can't ex- or can't really explain, mm. really. Because with the Invisible Man, I that's another movie. I I uh, I, I want to get this eventually. It's coming out pretty soon. I entered a contest to hopefully win uh, a copy of it, but they're coming out with a remastered, I think, 4K or Blu-ray set of all the classic Universal monsters. I want to buy them so I can watch them all one by one. I'm going to have to watch them regardless this year, which I'm kind of yeah. excited to do because this year at Horror Nights they're doing a classic monster maze. Yeah, you so, told me about that. Yeah, and I, I'm really excited for that. So um, I, I finally get to watch them all. I, I think I watched Dracula, like half of it, when on Halloween they do like these specials and they stuff. Do, they do tend to like um, linger on like more than like the modern yeah. movies nowadays. Yeah. Um, but you gotta remember, it was the '30s. It's different yeah. now than it was back in the day. They're just always gonna go down as some of the. It's best just uh, this is, it's hard to build suspense when it's it's a lot of build up, you know? Like yeah, it, it builds way too long. But I mean, I guess that's that's how it was back then. That's how it was, and I want to say that it was. It was a different style back then. And it was its own masterpiece back then. See, like today, they try really hard to scare audiences. I don't think I think that was scary audiences back in the day. Yeah. You know, there was today, like back in the day, they didn't have what we have. We have computers now. We have stuff we can look up, and we know CGI and stuff like that. We're all spoiled with all that kind of stuff these days. But back in the day, when they saw a bat flying, they were like, "Wow, that's amazing special effects!" You know, and exactly. And that's why I think that's why monster movies will, uh, the classic ones, will always be have a special place in my heart because they're original, they're old school, and that's awesome to me. Um. So yeah, man, that's basically you then huh yeah i mean i know i know like a good like grasp of the horror world you know i'm yeah. i'm not like fully as fond as you are but if anything i'll you know i'll take my pick i'll start learning pick it up as far you, you as have, i go you 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 have some good knowledge though i mean not a lot of people know back to when we're talking about frankenstein you you immediately called it like oh well isn't the doctor's name yeah i mean those are not a lot of people not a lot of people know that uh and and so you're getting somewhere so normally on the podcast we usually do um we do a series of things um so usually i'll have a list of things for us that talk about um mostly events that i follow on a twitter uh, account I, mm-hmm. that I follow called Bloody Disgusting, and they release articles, and I'll usually retweet the ones that catch my interest the most, and then we'll talk about them on the podcast. Um, but today, I just kind of wanted to introduce you, um, tell them who you were, maybe give some knowledge as to uh, how you where I the stand horror, and where we're gonna go. where you stand. So I mean, uh, you're pretty much you're in now, dude. So that's that's cool. I'm excited, um, man. Honestly, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna try to film a podcast at least once a week. Uh, they usually come out on Tuesdays. So, um, yeah, look forward to it. Jeremiah's is coming in hot. We're going to get some good stuff going. Yo, I appreciate it, man. I like you, like, coming to me and then, like, like letting me come on board. Like, this, it's very exciting. Like, I never, like, talked about horror, but I feel like it's a, it's a topic that it, it passes people's minds sometimes, you know? You know what? I'm a big geek. Uh, I, I love my graphic novels. I love comics movies and stuff like that but i usually like to do i I like to do this kind of stuff because this kind of takes it away from reality and i get to step into a whole nother person for this you know and yeah um if you know me in real life you know basically how i am on my youtube life i'm basically the same in the real life you know i'm just 
I like what what I like. I love my music. I love my comics. I love my horror. I love a little bit of everything. A lot of madness going up around here, and that's why I like to, my newest slogan for uh, the channel is "Welcome to the Madhouse." Because and I heard that yeah, it, it kind of spooked me like the Madhouse like. Like, what's that about? You know, it's, it's yeah. spooky. You know, like, you don't expect someone's like, welcome to the Madhouse. What Madhouse? Yeah. What are you talking about? Now, my, my whole thing is, like, the inmates run the asylum, the Madhouse, and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's, like, it's really cool. But, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very glad that you're you're on board. Um, I'm glad that people This was got the to, icebreaker. This was the... The icebreaker, The icebreaker yeah. episode, yeah. So a lot of people know, get to know who you are. Uh, I might actually title that, the Mindless Horror Podcast, Icebreaker to You. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> And yeah, uh, so yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming up pretty soon. Uh, a lot of st- a lot of our horror conventions. I'm going to Scare LA Sunday with uh, essentially a date. I can say okay. in a way. Um, I wish you like that. Those are scary too, man. Those are scary. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a horror scary. movie on its own. Um, but uh, I've talked to her, and she's interested in also being part of the crew. So that that'd be pretty cool to see her. I and honestly, I can't wait to meet her. I know. Uh, I'm getting sweaty hands already. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully get the whole crew together one day. Um, she offered to film for me, so that was pretty cool. I don't know. I've never seen. She's it. gonna take my job. Ah, there you go. Damn. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna see essentially how. After all we've been through. After all we've been through, man. I know. <laughs> um, so it's gonna be fun this Sunday, Scare LA. So expect some content for that, or it's probably already up because this goes up on Tuesdays. So. But uh, yeah, so. Thanks for listening to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Anthony. It's my new co-host, Jeremiah. And, yeah, that was... It was intense. It was intense, man. Like I said, thank you for being on. Make sure to tune in next week. Oh, one last thing. My good friends down at Shudder, they gave me an awesome promo code for uh, you fans out there who are into horror. If you guys are not familiar, Shudder is a streaming service for horror. And they stream some of the greatest stuff out there. Right now, they're doing a big time John Carpenter and Stephen King binge. And yeah, if you want to go sign up for a a 14 day free trial, I would go on shutter.com, go sign up, and enter promo code mindless for your 14 day free trial. Uh, That's code mindless for your 14 day free trial of shutter.com. Uh, where you get some of the best horror originals from Shudder themselves or just horror movies in general. That is Shudder.com. Sign up using co- uh, promo code MINDLESS for a 14-day free trial. And that's going to do it for us. Yeah, you didn't know we had a sponsor, did I didn't you? know. I mean, it's not really a sponsor, but I, when, I, when, I, uh, when I emailed a lot of people to try to get some promos going for, the, for this, um, Shutter really stepped up and, and gave me a cool promo. You code. surprised me, man. Yeah, that's very that's awesome. I, yeah. I can't wait to get myself a sponsor. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I mean, they don't pay me or anything, but they you know using that promo code, I get to watch some stuff sometimes. It's very worth very the subscription helpful. service. So yeah, Shutter.com. I, I think I use it to get myself some knowledge, man. There you go, man. <laughs> I mean, they got some they got some good originals and they got some classics on there. So that's uh, Shutter.com. Sign up using promo code Mindless for a 14 day free trial. And that is gonna do it for the Mindless Horror Podcast. Again, my name is Anthony. It's my co-host Jeremiah. Stormy TV. Stormy TV. Check them out. Links in the description below. And we will see you guys next week. Later. <laughs>